longest serving woman senator ever, was three terms mayor of San Francisco in the 70s and 80s. She was married three times, her first husband divorced and then second died and the third one died. She has one daughter, Catherine, and she went to Stanford University. And today we remember Diane Feinstein. Take a look. The myth that women can't play in the big leagues is perhaps pierced once and for all. Long before she became a United States Senator in 1992, Diane Feinstein was a political pioneer in her home state of California. In 1969, Feinstein was elected to San Francisco's Board of Supervisors. A year later, she began her first term as the board's first female president. But it wasn't triumph that catapulted her into the spotlight. It was tragedy. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. In 1978, San Francisco Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk were murdered by a former colleague and friend of Feinstein. It was their deaths, she said, that would ultimately shape her political philosophy. Feinstein became the first female mayor of San Francisco, serving two terms. Eventually, it led her to Washington, D.C., where she would become the longest tenured woman in the U.S. Senate. Born Diane Emile Goldman with German Jewish roots, Feinstein was the eldest of three girls born to Leon and Betty Goldman in San Francisco's upscale Presidio Terrace District. However, Feinstein's childhood was far from idyllic. She described enduring physical and emotional abuse at the hands of her mother, who suffered from mental illness. But it was her close relationship with her father that Feinstein credited for her success. Leon Goldman was a conservative Republican, but it was Feinstein's paternal uncle, a Democrat, who introduced her to politics at an early age. Observing these two ideologies, Feinstein learned how to take a moderate approach to political issues. I am honored to be elected to a full six-year term. <laughs> During her three decades in the U.S. Senate, Feinstein was a woman of firsts. She became the first woman to chair the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. In 2002, Feinstein voted in favor of the Iraq War, a decision she would later come to regret. It is clear today we must change course. In 2014, Feinstein defied President Barack Obama by publicly releasing what became known as the Torture Report. She helmed a six-year review of the CIA's detention and interrogation program. It culminated in the declassified report and the passage of legislation ensuring that post-9-11 interrogation methods are never used again. History will judge us by our commitment to a just society governed by law and the willingness to face an ugly truth. In 2017, Feinstein became the top Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee, the first woman to assume that role. She'd been through 10 Supreme Court appointments, some historical, others controversial. Is Brett Kavanaugh who we want on the most prestigious court in our country? Is he the best we can do? It's about the integrity of that institution and the integrity of this institution. Two years later, Feinstein would face what she called her hardest vote in 26 years, the first impeachment of President Donald Trump. There's a great weight to do the best thing for the United States of America, and that's not always easy to know. She said her proudest achievement was the enactment of the federal assault weapons ban in 1994. The fact is that the assault weapons ban worked. We've seen and we continue to see the cost of inaction. Despite many on Capitol Hill questioning her mental fitness, Feinstein kept on fighting, refusing to step down early. She planned to serve out her term, which ended in 2024. Senator Dianne Feinstein dead at 90. If you're joining us with the breaking news, the senior senator from California has passed away. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.